Hi friends, I'm Tammy Kay. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm teaching you not one, but two beautiful, bright, and vibrant fall cards that you can do right now, today. And it's not gonna take you too long. So let's go ahead and get started. Get your paints out. Let's paint the fall. Why not? So friends, before I start, I like to use the cardstock as a guide and just start to cut and measure and cut my watercolor paper a little bit smaller than my cardstock. All right, and now I am sketching out my leaf now. I do have a reference photo of a leaf I've painted before, but right now we're just etching out these lines. And as I'm moving along my paper, and you, if you need to pause, definitely do that so you can catch up. Um, but I'm just adding in, just kind of going back and forth really small. Uh, little lines to make some of those jagged edges for the leaf and I start with that top part just a lot thinner and I start to get wider as we go down towards the bottom making sure that this leaf you know has some flow to it and it's got some nice movement it's not just these straight lines that are making um, all the sections of the leaves if you want to go back around and make them more jagged like I am here you can and remembering that your pencil lines are going to show through your paint. I'm okay with that. Now, some people are not okay with that. And if you don't like it, you can always erase some of that with a kneaded eraser. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get started to painting. You can see the list of the supplies down below if you're interested in checking them out. They're all affiliated links here. So I've got my number eight round and I am just going up and down, leaving some white space, making sure that these edges are really jagged. I want this to look very natural and not too rounded. So I've got a nice orange and I've blended that up pretty well, just dropping in some more orange here to allow that to spread and move and, and bleed together. And then we're going to be doing variations of colors or different colors, I should say. So now we've got a lighter orange color here and I'm just still doing those same lines, making sure that everything is really nice, everything is really jagged, and blending well together. So if you feel like your paint isn't blending well, one thing that you can do is just clean your brush, dab it on a paper towel, and have some more of that damp, you know, the dampness there, a little bit of water, and just start to spread things around versus adding in more paint. Here I'm adding in some yellow, bringing the yellow up to touch the orange. They're pretty similar uh, in their colors here. And I'm making sure that we keep things like nice and jagged and having those really pretty edges. I'm kind of doing that same thing I did at the top, but just varying those colors. Thought it would be fun to add in some green and just end with that. And then just dropping in some brighter versions of those colors to again, allow them to spread and just make things look nice and soft here. I'm adding in my brown stem and just make it a nice thin one and you can even touch to the top where the paint is. It'll spread a little bit and there's nothing wrong with that. I actually kind of like that and you know watercolor is going to spread. Let watercolor do what it does best and don't worry about it. So here I've got my number two round brush and we're going to start doing the details of this leaf. Now these cards that we're making today are just vibrant, colorful, and perfect for fall and this is no exception if we have the leaf details on here we're just going to have a more dynamic painting you don't have to do the veins but i chose to because it makes it look a little bit more realistic so i'm really just doing those sketchy marks very thin i didn't commit to a hard line i didn't commit to a quick line but rather what was important to me was just to have those thin marks that look a lot more natural in my opinion Little sketchy lines are my favorite. All right, so we're adding in those veins off of that main vein. I probably called it a stem, but we're adding in these. And this is what helps to support all these sections of this leaf. So we're looking at what are the highest points on each section and making sure there's a main vein there. And then of course, with our, I'm using this brownish paint here, we're going to add in those little veins that come off that main one here. So they're diagonal lines that kind of splay outward just a little bit. And I'm using pretty quick brush strokes here, pretty quick brush movements to get the work done. 
So we'll speed up this part and just kind of get to that last section of what we're going to do to make this, shall we say, a more fun and festive painting. So don't worry about your lines. They don't have to be perfect. They don't all have to be the same length. Just making sure you're putting them in where it looks best to you. So if you're wondering what do we do next to complete this painting, guys, we're going to take some really watery paint on our brush. So we're just going to tap that brush around, adding in some nice paint splatter. And that's where the magic happens, people. That's what I love. For our second card here, we're just going to go a little bit below that middle of the paper and make a nice horizon line. So we are drawing in just some simple lines here for where our tree trunks are gonna go. I'm making sure that it's pretty asymmetrical. It's not this matchy matchy situation, which can be hard to avoid, especially if you are prone to want to make everything look equal. And now we're just simply using that as a guide as we start adding in little blobs of paint here, these really loose brush strokes making sure to keep some white space there. So this is going to be where we're adding in our autumn leaves on our trees. And I've got this nice orangey red here. Allow the paint to run out. If you want it to be really dark, you can do that. You can also go ahead with that second layer once everything is dry, which is what I'm gonna show you later. And then we can add in some nice marks, some shadows and that kind of thing. So I've got this beautiful orangey, yellowy orange, I should say. And we're gonna place those randomly in here and just kind of uh, varying up the colors that we'll be using today. I mean, you really could do so much with this. And I've decided that we're going to do several shades of orange. This one is more of that bright reddish orange color. Then they've got more of that yellowy orange color. You can do yellow, you can do red, you can do green, you could do brown. I don't think we're gonna do brown today, but we're definitely gonna add in some green as well. So I'm just putting in some marks that can emulate those larger and taller trees and just being pretty loose about it. Really watery now for our green and just poke in some green here and there. We're not worrying so much about tree shapes. We've got some of these you know, oval or ball shapes as well. If you do really light paint, it's gonna look like those trees are more in the background and that's really pretty. Just filling up some space where you think you need more and don't add too much because we like having the white to separate where the trees are located. So one of the things that I was really excited to do while I was doing this painting for this card was to take the original colors that I used for the trees and just with back and forth loose brush strokes, start adding those colors in the ground. We could pretend that they're reflecting off a river, a body of water, or maybe they're just reflecting off of the ground, the grass, who knows? But just adding in this little aspect is gonna make your painting have a lot more pizzazz and be very interesting. So I do want to blend some of those colors together, just placing them down in front and below of where the original color is on the tree. You can see here that I need the green in there. Then I just took my cleanish brush and I blended all those colors together, covering up all that white space and making it nice and smooth, I would say. So now that everything has dried, we're gonna go in with a number two round brush and we're gonna start painting in what's going to make this painting really come to life, our tree trunks. So you can do them kind of wonky, you can do them straight, a little bit curved, I like to add in some grounding, kind of those roots there right at the ground line. And you can see I'm just kind of adding those in, connecting everything together on the ground there. And if you have this idea that you want things to be really straight, don't worry about it. Oh, adding in some little branches here. If you see some white space is also another little trick just to make it look like everything is connected together. So your trunks can be a little curvy, wonky. I wanna always remind you to take a deep breath and relax. And remember, this is supposed to be fun. If you're feeling stressed at all, remind yourself, you can always do it over. This video is gonna be out there on YouTube probably forever. So come back and try it again. Or just paint one tree at a time and see what your style is that you like the most. It's not something to be stressed about. It's not something to be worried about. We are not gonna go for perfectionism because it's terrible. It does not increase our joy and our happiness in our life, and it does not make us 
create better artwork, all right? So just remember that. And guys, if you were liking this video, I always have to ask, leave a comment, let me know what you like the most, like the video, subscribe to my channel, it really helps me out with the little algorithm and all that stuff. One thing I want to remind you of is as you're painting this in, being aware that you can add in more stuff to the white space if you feel like there's too much space there and you need some more trees, that's completely appropriate at this point. Right now I'm taking my number 12 round and I am going to do little blobs of paint, just adding in some darker pigment, kind of in this little half circular shape. That's what I like to do. I'm creating the shadows, guys. I'm creating the texture and I'm making sure that these little trees are not gonna be flat on our paper. So I've started with our greens and look, I'm just adding in some more and using a really light stippling motion, which is helpful just to get those little blobs of paint on there. So I have used a large brush here, but I will be switching to a smaller one too. Now, sometimes you like to have more control. A smaller brush like this one, which is a number two, is just gonna give you smaller amounts of paint like we talked about, and maybe more precision in your details. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add in our ground. So the same type of thing that we did already for our ground, except that I wanted to just make sure that's a little bit more painterly. We're not smoothing everything over, but rather we're keeping more of those specific sections so that we can see those marks. I do love seeing the brush strokes when I'm painting something and it is kind of what we call a painterly look. This lovely fall scene is just supposed to make your heart happy, adding a little splatter and I know that you can do it. Okay friends, I hope you enjoyed painting these two beautiful fall cards. They're great to give away, they're great to keep as well. Stay tuned until the next video. It may be fall, it may be something else, but I hope to see you soon on the next tutorial.